Welcome back to SWGA Sickle Cell Awareness YouTube channel. I'm patient advocate Monica. If you're visiting for the first time, welcome. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the power of love in the healing process. How do a patient know that they are loved? And when your medical team cares. Let's get into the video. As a patient and patient advocate, I've seen the power of love in the healing process. Back in 2013, when I was hospitalized for two months and they didn't know what my health issues were, and the doctor that was a part of the team didn't think I was going to live. My sisters were there. My parents were there. They were by my side. My godmother was there every day. And because they were there, they were praying for me, they were fighting for me, they were speaking when I couldn't speak for myself, and they just demonstrated true love. And that's what my CDC doctor said. He said, if it had not been for your family and your friends being here, I don't think you would have made it. I don't think you would have made it through what you were going through and what your body was experiencing. So... I've seen the power of love, the love that my family and friends had for me brought me back and it, it always helps me heal in the process and it gives me a reason to rehabilitate quicker and faster. I was getting phone calls, I was getting text messages and people were constantly praying for me. And as a patient advocate, I've been in the rooms with patients and they felt like they were all alone and they didn't have no one to come visit them or they didn't think anyone cared. So there were times that I went to the hospital or I went to doctor's appointments with different patients and I tell them, I'm here for you, I love you, I care for you, and I want you to get better. So me saying those words and being there for them, helping them understand what the doctors were saying, helping them understand what was going on and what was being done to them and the things that they didn't understand it made a world of a difference and I remember one of the patients that I was working with he was going through rehabilitation and he was like I'm not gonna go through rehabilitation if Monica's not here so when she come here then we're gonna do this therapy because he had to go through physical therapy and he said I know she cares I know she loves me she gonna watch me and make sure I do this right so and I was like you know I really love you and I really care for you and you're gonna be all right we are sickle sisters and brothers and you're gonna get through this this is just one step back to a step forward and he went through that and he said Monica because you visited me because you cared you visited me even when friends and families didn't visit me because he had been in the hospital so much off and on and off and on and so his friends and family kind of got tired of him going to the hospital but that's a part of the sickle cell journey you're going to be in and out of the hospital you're going to be in and out of the doctor's office it's just a part of the process and he went through hip surgery twice so that was another reason that I was constantly there for him and making sure he do his physical therapy and messing with him about that. I'm like, make sure you do what the physical therapist tell you to do. You know, your insurance is paying for this. So, and I'll have him laughing it. But me being there and showing that I love him and care for him as a sickle warrior, it it made the difference in the world. It is so important, and he healed faster. That's what one of his nurses was saying. It was like, he's been in here often and he's just never recovered this fast. Usually it takes him longer. And I don't think if you had been here, it, instead of it being him getting through this in two weeks, he we would have had to deal with him for two months because nobody was there. And that just warmed my heart. And I was like, that's what I do. I'm a patient advocate. He's a sickle cell warrior. And I understand what he's going through. Thank God I didn't have to go through through hip surgery but I do understand what he's going through and that made the healing process so much faster it is so important to know that patients are loved and they are cared for that segues into the next thing that I'm going to talk about and that's how do people know that they're loved how do patients know that they're loved when you just show up sometimes I don't have to say anything I'll surprise them some patients when they're hospitalized before the pandemic 
and I would find out they're in the hospital. They would call me and text me, well, Monica, I'm in the hospital. You don't have to come out here. I'm going to be okay. And I would just show up. And most of the time, most of my patients I know that I work with and some of the things that I know that they like, I would do. Like when I was visiting that particular patient a couple of times in the hospital, I know he liked Coca-Cola. You could never go to his hospital room and he didn't have a case of Coca-Cola. And so I would bring him a, a case of Coca-Cola. I would also bring water because I'm like, um, Myron, I will never see you drink no water. He was like, well, you drinking no water for everybody. So I'll bring him that, and then I know he either like a Burger King Whopper meal, or he would like a Subway salad, because I know he didn't like hospital food, and sometimes he would go without eating. So I would show up with that. There was another patient that I had, even though he was on the cardiovascular floor. I didn't want to do it, but I did it, because I know he's he was going to be okay. And he was like, um, will you bring me a pizza? I'm like, sir. You're on the cardiovascular floor. You do not need a greasy pizza. He was like, well, that's what I have a taste for. I said, um, don't fuss, don't fuss, just do it, just do it. I'll pay you. I said, no, I got you. And he was like, well, I know you care. You genuinely care. And I, I brought him back the pizza, and I said, when people care for patients and patients know that they are cared for, it makes the whole, it makes a world of a difference. And what's amazing about that particular patient, he ate the pizza, and that was the only thing he ate that day. And I was like, you can't keep taking pain medicine and not lining your stomach with food, or you will mess up the lining in your stomach. So he would he was like, okay, Monica, okay, Monica, I'm listening. So I've had several patients that I work with, and I let them know that I'm I care, and they're gonna be all right. I'm praying for them. I'm supporting them. Some patients I have to video chat with um, because whatever issue they were dealing with, and during the time I'm still going through immunotherapy, especially if they were on a heavy antibiotic, I didn't visit because I'm still building my immune system and my medical team and my care team like uh, Monica uh, no you're not going out there you might as well video chat so I would video chat with some of my patients and they would be like yeah yeah and but they were thankful for that or they got their phone calls like how you doing I haven't talked to you in a while I want to make sure you're okay and one of my female friends I was like well she's also a war I said I haven't heard from you in a while what's going on and Monica, I'm doing okay. I'm just, I'm just getting away from everything. I'm like, you know, I ain't gonna let you stay by yourself too long, cause I don't know what you're going through. You might be going through something. And you probably just need somebody to talk to, or somebody to laugh at. And she was like, well, yeah, Monica, I'm glad you called because I just, I was just in this space. I kind of felt depressed. I felt like nobody cared, but I knew you cared, and I figured you had a lot of other things going on, and you probably didn't have time. I said, I always have time for you. You're like one of the original OGs of SWGA Sickle Cell Awareness. So, of course, I'm going to be here for you. Let me know anything you need. And I sent her some water, some SWGA Sickle Cell Awareness water. I said, I want you to, I'm, I'm sending you this water because I want you to stay encouraged. And no matter what you're going through, I want you to always be know that you can talk to me. Whether you can either call me, video chat with me, or text me. I'm here. I'm here for you. And I want you to know that. And I know a lot of times, sometimes going to the hospital continuously and often, you're, you're treated like you're not taking care of yourself. When most of the time, that's not the case, which segues ways into the next thing that I wanted to talk about. Having a medical team that cares is a blessing. I experienced that. I know that firsthand for myself. And my medical team, I say this all the time, they don't have to do the things that they do, but they do them anyway. I know as a doctor, as a nurse, as a social worker, you're only supposed to go so far according to the book. But when you love what you do, when you love what you do, that makes a world of a difference. I know my social worker loved what she do. I know my sickle cell specialist know, love what he do. I know my primary care physician love what he do. My nurses love what they do. 
So, and, and you know, the question is asked, even if you didn't get paid, would you still do it? Yes, they would still do it because that's what they believe that they were born to do. It's something about caring for patients that can't care for themselves or having medical history and don't know what to do with the information and seeing people go from bad health to great health. And seeing an issue and being a part of the solution is what makes the difference. My medical team, their focus is making a difference and being a part of the solution in the sickle cell community. That's what I love about my team. Everybody on my medical team knows something about sickle cell and whatever they don't know, they have resources to reach out to find out a little bit more of what's going on in the sickle cell community. And that's why I do the Come Hub With Us event every year and I'm going to do one next year even if I have to do it virtually because every sickle cell patient in their community needs a team. The Come Hub With Us is the team that every sickle cell patient needs. As I bring this video to a close, I want you to let me know in the comments section who or what medical professional that you have that you work with and you know that they care for you and you know they're going above and beyond for what they should be doing. Because a lot of times some doctors and some medical professionals go above and beyond what they're supposed to do because they care. They don't, you don't have to have sickle cell. You don't have to have congestive heart failure, just let me know in the comments, whatever your health issue is, whatever medical professional you see, let me know in the comment section about a, a medical professional that has gone above and beyond helping you to recover and heal in your healing journey, in your wellness journey. Until next time, stay hydrated and stay well. Goodbye.